Hello and welcome back to another lazy lesson. The Union Home Ministry has declared the National Democratic Front of Bodo Land, that is NDFB, as an unlawful association under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act 1967. The NDFB was declared unlawful for the first time in 1990 and since then the ban has been extended every 5 years. So in this background, today we shall try and understand more about Bodo's and what is the demand for a Bodo Land state, concerns and challenges this demand has posed. Now before going further with Bodo Land, let us try and understand what is NDFB and why was it banned. The NDFB was formerly known as the Bodo Security Force which was established by Ranjan De Meri in 1986 and alongside political movements, it is one of the armed groups that has sought to create a separate Bodo state. And this group has now again been declared illegal mainly because of its involvement in a series of violent activities and joining hands with other extremist groups against India and Indian armed forces. And since NDFB has been declared unlawful under the provisions of Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, let us quickly have a overview of the act. See basically the act was passed in 1967. It aims at effective prevention of unlawful activities associations in India. And in 2004, the act was amended to include terrorist act to the list of offences under which any organization can be banned. The act is heavily criticized as it gives absolute power to the central government. This means under the provisions of the act, center can deem an activity as unlawful and then by the way of law it can declare an organization unlawful. And recently in August, parliament has cleared the unlawful activities prevention amendment bill 2019 to designate individuals as terrorists on certain grounds provided in the act. And recently the national crime records data has released a report pertaining to the cases registered under UAPA. And as per the data, more than 35% cases registered under the act were recorded in Manipur. And Manipur is followed by Jammu and Kashmir with 17% cases registered and then Assam with 14% cases registered and then comes UP at 12%. And in terms of number of persons arrested, UP comes at the top. It is closely followed by Assam, Manipur, Bihar and Jharkhand. And here, Bodos are Tibetan Burman speaking indo mongoloid ethnic group. They are mainly concentrated in four districts of Assam today. Presently, they constitute about 5-6% to of the total population of Assam. However, till 1825 AD, they dominated and ruled larger parts of Assam. And the four districts in which they live in Assam together constitute the Bodo Territorial Area District. And this includes Kokrajar, Chirang, Baksa and Udalguri. And all these districts are located north of the Brahmaputra River. And now, how the demand for a separate Bodo land come about? See, first of all, the demand for a separate state is not something new for Bodos. They have been demanding a separate state for about 200 years now. But for the first time, a separate state under the nomenclature Bodo Land was demanded in 1966-67 by the Plains Tribals Council of Assam, that is PTCA. And PTCA is a political outfit based in Assam. And the renewed demand for a separate Bodo Land came again in 1987 by All Bodo Students Union. And this union was a fallout of the Assam movement during 1979 and 1985. And the main slogan of All Bodo Students Union was divide Assam 50-50 and ultimately it ended with the signing of the Assam Accord which addressed the demands of protection and safeguards for the Assamese people. And specifically, Clause 6 of the Accord envisaged that appropriate constitutional, legislative and administrative safeguards shall be provided to protect, preserve and promote the cultural, social, linguistic identity and heritage of the Assamese people. And the Assam Accord was signed in 1985 between representatives of the government of India and the leaders of the Assam movement. There were three other important provisions in the Assam Accord. Now, as per the Accord, all people who came to Assam before January 1, 1966 would be given citizenship. And secondly, those who moved into Assam between January 1, 1966 and March 24, 1971 would be detected in accordance with the provisions of the Foreigners Act 1946 and their names would be deleted from the electoral rolls and they would remain disenfranchised for a period of 10 years. And lastly, the accord said, foreigners who came to Assam on or after March 25, 1971 shall continue to be detected, deleted and practical steps shall be taken to expel such foreigners. 
and here is the proposed map of bodo land by various insurgent groups and political outfits based in assam it includes most of the area north of the brahmaputra river and few places south to the brahmaputra river and the proposed area includes nearly 25000 square kilometers and now why are bodos demanding for a separate state it is mainly because of a series of issues that the bodos had to tackle and face from the beginning of the 20th century and these issues included illegal immigration encroachment of their lands forced assimilation loss of language and culture further they are also lagging behind in education and employment compared to the rest of the assam besides they have also been consistently deprived of the political and socio economic rights by successive state and central governments now the bodos have not only become an ethnic minority in their own ancestral land but have also been struggling for their existence and status as an ethnic community now a way forward can emerge only by bringing all political ethnic and religious groups together in a dialogue that asserts peace and mutual respect based on today's discussion try and answer the following question which of the following places are located to the north of the brahmaputra river 1 kokrajhar 2 balsa 3 udalguri 4 chirang you can comment your answers in the comment section below and from mains perspective you can try and answer the following question that's it for today thank you